This lecture is about a method or tool called Failure Mode and Effect Analysis, FMEA. The objective of FMEA is to look at all ways in which a product or process can fail or does not function as, as intended by design. The method initially started as a tool for improving safety to prevent safety accidents from occurring. Then it evolved into a standard quality improvement tool and an integral part of a comprehensive quality management system. So what is FMEA? It is a systematic tool or method for identifying, ranking, and preventing product and process problems. The keyword is systematic, since engineers have always looked for potential sources of failure, but FMEA makes the process more structured and can be used as a standard communication tool. Although FMEAs are usually performed on existing products or processes, we will use it on a new product design, which makes it proactive, finds and prevents failures in the design phase and before they actually materialize or occur. Product FMEAs can be conducted at each phase of the design process, preliminary design, prototyping, or final design. There are two main types of FMEA, product or design FMEA and process FMEA. A product FMEA focuses on identifying potential failure modes for a new product design. How would this product fail given the current design? What is the impact of this failure on product functionality and customer satisfaction? How can we reduce the probability of occurrence and the impact of such failures? should it occur? All these questions are addressed by a design FMEA. Of course, a process FMEA answers similar questions regarding failure modes of corrective and corrective actions for a production or manufacturing process. The focus, however, of this lecture is on design or product FMEA. FMEA must be performed by a team, not a single individual. In order to bring a variety of perspectives and experiences to the project. These teams are not permanent, but assembled especially for a specific FMEA project. Best size for the team is usually four to six people, but the minimum number of people will be dictated by the number of areas affected by the FMEA study. For example, engineering, manufacturing, materials, maintenance, etc. It is necessary to appoint a team leader at the beginning of the FMEA project. He or she will facilitate meetings, ensure necessary resources are available, and ensure focus and time progress. Finally, the FMEA team must always consult and check with product or process experts in order to clarify technical issues that the team cannot agree on or that are unclear. Here are some basic terminology required for FMEA. Failure mode. Ways in which a product or process can fail. Each failure mode has a potential effect. Some effects are more likely to occur than others. Each potential effect has a relative risk associated with it. The relative risk of failure and its effect is determined by three factors, severity, occurrence, and detection. Severity is the consequence of failure and should it, should it occur, how severe it is. Occurrence is the probability of the failure occurring. And detection is the probability of the failure being detected before the impact of its effect is realized. Here are the various steps performed in a FMEA study. It's kind of like a road map. Uh, first, we identify the failure modes, uh, and then we identify the effects of this failure mode, should it occur. Uh, this will give us a number for the severity of this effect, how severe it is, and also uh, give us an idea about the occurrence, uh, probability detection for this uh, failure mode. Also, then we identify the failure, uh, the causes of this uh, failure mode. Um, this will uh, then followed by uh, we evaluate the current controls to determine whether 
it's possible to detect such a failure mode before it occurs and this will give us a uh, value for detectability uh, and all three numbers severity occurrence and detectability will be used to determine the rpn number which is the risk priority number uh, once we have an rpn number for the various failure modes we could do some analysis to these uh, look uh, look at identifying various improvement actions to improve this RPN number. These are the same steps uh, that I've shown you in the previous slide for the FMEA roadmap. However, it's in any list. First, you uh, here first we review the product and define the scope of the FMEA study. Then the FMEA, FMEA team brainstorms potential failure modes. Uh, and then the team also lists potential effects of these failure modes, failure effects, assign a severity rating, and we'll see that, how do we do that in the next few slides for each effect, assign an occurrence rating for each failure mode, assign a detection rating for each of the failure modes or effects, and then based on these three numbers, calculate a risk priority number, uh, prioritize the failure modes to do some action regarding how to uh, reduce uh, the RPN number and take action to eliminate or reduce some of the RPN as I said calculate the new RPN uh, this is a uh, failure mode and effect analysis worksheet that is used actually uh, at Ford Motor Company and this is a blank sheet and showing the various uh, headings uh, that are used in reality in uh, a company, automotive company in this case, potential failure mode, potential effects, severity, uh, potential causes causes of failures, occurrence, current controls, method where you do detectability, uh, severity times occurrence, RPN number, recommended actions where you do, so and the actions taken. So it's a real uh, data sheet that is used in companies to perform uh, FMEA studies. First step, as I said, is to review the product and define the scope of the FMEA study. The team must fully understand the product before conducting the FMEA study. A clear definition of the product should be written and understood by everyone on the team. They can look at drawings, check technical data, or listen to briefings from the design team or design experts. The scope of the FMEA must also be well defined. Uh, this will prevent. This will help the team prevent from focusing on the wrong aspects of the product during the FMEA study. So they have to focus on the right aspects. The statement was utilized by a team in charge of developing an FMEA study for a new coffee maker. Notice how specific and clear they stated the parts that they will focus on for the FMA study. Our team will conduct an FMA study on the new RS100 coffee maker and the glass carafe for that coffee maker. So the, the, the study will, will, will consider both. The FMA will not include any parts of this coffee maker that are common to other coffee makers in our product line. So this is very, very specific such as the electronic clock uh, and so on. The second step of the FMEA study is brainstorm potential failure modes. The team will brainstorm these potential failure modes uh, by a series of um, uh, brainstorming sessions fo focusing on different elements of the product. Uh, people, methods, equipment, material, environment, all of these. Fo uh, focusing on different elements at a time will result in a more thorough list of, it, of potential failure modes. Once the brainstorming uh, sessions are complete, uh, the ideas should be organized by grouping them into like categories. So group these FM, FMs into like categories. Uh, the team must decide uh, the best categories for grouping. They can group by failure type. Uh, they can be grouped by position on the product uh, by the severity of the seriousness of the failure and so on an easy way to work through the grouping process is to put all the failures 
modes into sticky yellow notes and post them on a wall um, so that uh, they are easy to see and move around as they are being grouped in, into different groups. By the way, functional diagrams that we saw in the previous few lectures can help in this step too because you can this way look at different functions, how the various different functions would fail. The third step in a FMEA study would be a list potential effects for each failure. While the failure modes listed, with the failure modes listed, the team identifies the effect of each should a failure occur. It is helpful to think about this step as an if then process. If the failure occur, then what will happen? Uh, some failure modes may have only one effect, while others may have many effects. Uh, finally, it would be uh, helpful to construct a cause and effect diagram in this step. This is a cause and effect diagram. Uh, example, uh, we have the causes, failure modes, causes, failure modes, and then the effects shown in this uh, diagram which is helpful to construct. Here's an example of an airbag a failure mode and it shows that the failure mode is one of the failure modes. Of, of course you're going to construct a diagram like this for every failure mode and this one of them is occupant unable to absorb inflation force. That's the failure mode. The various causes are uh, one of them is people passenger too small uh, another cause will be them from the material uh, bag material too abrasive uh, methods uh, lack of proper warning so uh, you can see that for the causes they have used uh, different titles and then uh, a, a subcategory under that title you know the material then what's related to the cause related to the material then or cause related to people or cause related to machinery or cause related to environment which is like passenger not wearing the seat belt so that's an environment thing so the various causes for this particular failure mode and then what are the consequences or the effects would be here in particular injury uh, lightweight passengers uh, a bruised passenger in crash kill small children and those are all potential failure modes with various severity. Uh, the next thing is to assign a severity rating uh, for each effect uh, this is a generic measure for severity it can be tailored to fit a specific product or company. For instance, here we see that the highest rating is 10 and the lowest is 1. Uh, 1 means none, the failure uh, would not be noticeable at all, while the highest uh, 10 it says uh, dangerously high, failure could injure the customer or an employee. So, you know, from not, not noticed at all to injury or death uh, or s some serious consequence. So, and in between there are various shades and levels of severity that you can select from to assign a severity rating for the effect. The next thing is to assign an, an occurrence rating. An occurrence rating also here is a generic measure from 1 to 10. Um, 1 being uh, a remote failure is unlikely, very unlikely, you know, very rare to very high, very likely, uh, very probable. Okay, and again, as I said, there are uh, shades of this uh, occurrence rating in between one and 10. Uh, the next thing is to assign a detection rating, basically how uh, easy it is to detect the failure uh, before it occurs. Uh, how likely are we to detect the failure or the effect of the failure given our existing controls procedures in the design so this step starts by identifying existing controls in, a, in an organization uh, if there are no con current controls the probability of detection will be low in general and then again detection here ranges from failure to uh, failure is not detectable to Absolutely, uh, yeah, to uh, the defect is obvious, almost certain, okay? Uh, so from 10 to 1, the, uh, for example, uh, the rating of 1 means the defect is obvious. 
or there is a hundred percent automatic inspection with regular calibration that means you know uh, either the customer will 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 hundred percent detect that uh, failure uh, here it's almost impossible to detect that failure Finally, uh, or the seventh step is calculate the risk priority number RPN for each effect, and we do so by multiplying the uh, three factors together: severity, occurrence, and detection. You know, we will arrive at an overall RPN, which is uh, between one and one thousand for each failure mode. Uh, then we will use this uh, RPN number. To sort and rank the different failure modes to prioritize the need for corrective action. Prioritize the failure modes for action using this Pareto uh, diagram or Pareto histogram. You can see here that uh, the highest RPMs with the pump fails. Uh, the next high, highest RPM is uh, calcium deposit and so on. So we're going to focus on the uh, higher RPNs to reduce their value. Uh, so the, the highest RPNs should be attended to first. The team may want to select a cutoff RPN value at which they look at uh, the ones at this cutoff point and higher and ignore the ones that are uh, smaller. Uh, here is the sheet, as I told you, from Ford Motor Company using the airbag example, and you can see this uh, filled uh, with um, a process, product, or function purpose. Inflate airbag, potential failure mode, bag does not open on impact. Uh, uh, this is the failure mode. The failure effect is uh, injure the passenger. Severity is 8. I'm not sure is this CC. Uh, potential uh, causes of failure. Sensor is not functioning properly. Occurrence is too low. Uh, and then the de 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 detectability is average 6. And then the overall RPN is 96. Recommended action, add a redundant sensor to monitor impact. So by adding a redundant sensor, you reduce this uh, value. Actually, a uh, sensor is not functioning properly, and its occurrence is, though, even though it's low, but now it has actually be um, very low. Okay. The other failure mode here for the same uh, airbag problem. Uh, or the same airbag uh, FMEA would be the occupant unable to withstand inflation force. And then again, the recommended actions will be install switch, which deactivates airbag system unless seat belt is worn. So basically, you need to wear the seat belt. So that's you would reduce the severity number by actually from 8 to a lower number by doing such an action. That's how you actually use the FMEA sheet analysis to uh, improve your design by reducing uh, the RPN numbers for certain failure modes and effects. Uh, finally, companies often identify special product characteristics with an appropriate symbol on the FMEA sheet and that's really what was the CC uh, headings in the previous FMEA sheet that I told you I forget what was. So the CC, if there's a star in that column that means you know this uh, failure mode is of special, uh, pay special attention to it because it's very critical or sometimes it's regulatory. That means the government, you have to satisfy a certain regulation for the government. So we use this um, uh, CC uh, symbol. Uh, these uh, special critical characteristics, so the CC, whether it is failure mode is a CC or not, are typically items which affect regulatory. Compliance, that means, you know, basically uh, some uh, rules by the government they have to abide by, uh, such as items which should be given warning to customers, you know, like wearing the seatbelt, for instance.